much for joining us today on Feeling Good, sponsored by Warren County Community Services. Today, we are celebrating. We are 100 episodes in celebration of Feeling Good. And to commemorate our 100th show, we have the two ladies who are actually responsible for getting Feeling Good off the ground. I'd like to introduce to you Bell Hux and Karen Hill. And I'm so delighted that you two could join us today to celebrate 100 episodes. Can you believe it? No, that's oh, amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. Thanks for inviting us. Oh, sure. Well, let's, let's start at the beginning. Let's tell our audience or remind our audience who you two are, where you were when you started feeling good, and we'll go from there. So, Belle, would you start off and introduce yourself, please? Hi, I'm Belle Hux. Um, I actually have a, um, a company. We work with fundraising and development, Bell Hux Solutions. But back in the day, I actually worked at Warren County Community Services, WCCS, and they were celebrating their 40th anniversary, and we actually introduced a new logo, which you will see as part of the feeling good. But with that was one thing that we always wanted more of was more visibility. And so we started with, um, uh, you know, different activities in the marketing because I served as the um, development and marketing director at WCCS, and uh, we had this uh, opportunity to, to be on some different shows. Um, and we talked about aging services and Karen would be involved as well. And um, it kind of grew from there. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> well, and, so we put and, it as, yeah, then we put it as part of our strategic plan where we redid that in 2013. And um, I actually have an old copy of that and it has <laughs> on there launch the feeling good show. April of 2013, right, Karen? Is yeah, that the right date? Right. Yeah, right. that's when it was. Well, that's a good segue <laughs> to introductions from you, Karen. Tell our audience uh, where you were when Feeling Good started. Well, I am, I'm Karen Hill, and I was at Warren County Community Services in the office right next to Bell, actually. And um, I was director of aging services there. And from what Joe Hackman, the director of Channel 6, tells me, um, I had been on the city show with Mike McMurray a couple times, and he had approached me about doing a show for older adults. And of course, I said no, but somehow <laughs> Belle found out about it. I might have told her. <laughs> I don't know. And um, so it just kind of developed from there. It, because Val, of course, wanted me to do it, and Joe wanted me to do it, and I got tired of saying no. So, and I thought Carol would just be a great um, fit oh. for doing that. And you know, she's working with the aging population, and when we just wanted the aging population to not only just be aging and just the aging services, but to also kind of expand what we did at Warren County Community Services in mm -hmm. aging services. We really wanted to highlight our activities there and the senior center there and that um, seniors weren't just all getting, um, you know, only services and meals and that type of thing, but they actually were out there in the community and so many great things happening around. So I thought Karen was just a perfect fit for that. So, right. So, uh, so anyways, I know Val and I were talking and we remember having lots of meetings, lots of planning meetings and what we wanted the show to be. And, uh, you know, Val, you're right. We, we wanted it. We wanted to promote the services that people needed, but we also wanted them to know that there's a lot to the aging process and we served right. a lot of, and we and they still do serve a lot of different seniors at various stages and so the senior center the exercise programs the all the different activities that we had going and we wanted um really for it to be a very positive show uh, because 
a lot of times older people don't really appreciate getting older. And, you know, Val and I are, gosh, we started this in 2013, so we're older now. Well, and, wait and, a minute. <laughs> and, and, you know, it can be a, a very positive experience. But, of course, there are challenges, too. So we wanted, we wanted to address all of that on the show. I yeah, remember, I I remember uh, working as a volunteer mm-hmm. uh, with Val on the gala. One of the oh, galas, yeah. the the fundraising events um, that that marked, uh, I think, the 40th anniversary and so on. So I was mm-hmm. in and out of the 741 building quite a bit, in and out of right. Bell's office, the meetings and so on. And every time I was on that floor, I would go, I would be walking past Karen's office. And um, I think periodically... Um, I got to know more about Karen uh, doing the Feeling Good show. And I think a couple of times she asked me, she said, Shelly, as I was going by the door, do you have do you have any topics or any people that you think might be might be good for the show and so on? And um, so I think I was on the show once as a guest. I, I, I kind of forget that. But long story short, uh, the more I, I would see Feeling Good. Uh, the more I thought, well, this is this is a great opportunity, as you say, to um, address a number of different topics of interest um, mm-hmm. and in and information. They could be informational, entertainment, etc. Um, and so I I became like a fan of feeling good. And I would, I would watch uh, the program often and so forth. So this is kind of full circle coming back around today because then Belle started her own business. Karen moved on to a, another position. Mm-hmm. And then suddenly I was approached to see if I'd be interested in hosting feeling good. And I was like, well, definitely I would love to do that. So isn't it funny how here we are again? I um, know. And and we're here. Joe Hackman is behind the screen. He's, right. working, yeah. he's working the magic behind the screen. Right. And right. here we are, here we are in 2021 doing a Zoom format, which is something that's very topical. And mm-hmm. we actually we actually use Zoom this year. Um, mm-hmm. often during the quarantine to bring guests on. And it actually right. worked out. It actually worked out very well because we were able to, um, you know, uh, include people that wouldn't ordinarily maybe have been able to get to the studio in Lebanon. Mm-hmm. And so it actually worked out nicely. And I appreciate you doing the Zoom format today because I have family that are visiting me Belle is visiting her some of her family members, and we're all at our we're all at our homes. Um, actually, feeling good, right? We're feeling yeah. good and, ma- and making it all work, you know. And mm-hmm. because what the theme that we st- you still use, which every time I hear that music, it just makes a, a smile come <laughs> on my face. But you know, I I think of food, folks, fun, fitness, finances, and that's really what we made the show be. And then if you look back at that logo of WCCS is, you know, it's kind of stretching into the community because their um, logo means, you know, we're strengthening the fabric of our community and that is still standing. So I just am so happy to have been a part of that and seeing something that has lasted not only just a few years, but lasted over many years now. That, that was eight years ago. And we're still, you know, talking strong about feeling good and, and all the great things that it can bring to people. So it's well, exciting you know, still. It, it living, it, living a really vibrant and uh, uh, having a lifestyle that's satisfying to you as you age, that's, that's part of what we wanted to do. Mm-hmm. So I have a funny story, though, about the name. And Val, Val did, because one day Joe called after we had all these meetings and he said, well, you need a name for the show. And we're like, oh, wow, what are we going to do? <laughs> so earlier, earlier, I had been at a graduation where um, the graduates 
were able to select the song they would play as they walked down the auditorium aisle to get their diplomas. And so it was a pretty, you know, everybody was excited, but it was a pretty somber, serious occasion. And so we had, you know, some of these more serious, sedate songs. And then all of a sudden, um, James Brown, I Feel Good started playing. And I thought, oh, well, who's, who's doing that song? And it was my daughter. Oh. And, and what was so funny is everybody had been very quiet in the audience and very respectful. And all of a sudden, people started singing along and they started clapping and it changed the whole atmosphere of that auditorium. And so I told Belle, I said, that's what I want the show to be. I want it to be exciting and uplifting and, and people feeling good. And so I said, I told her, um, we need to get the rights to use that song title. And so Belle, because she is who she is, she actually investigated that. And um, it involved, I think it involved a lot of money and royalties and uh, attorneys. And of course, we had no money. So I'm we're not doing it. <laughs> yeah, we, we couldn't do that. We don't have any, we didn't have any money. <laughs> but so then we still, we kind of altered the title. Um, and so that's how we came up with feeling good with no G on feeling. So yeah, I always wondered that. I did mm -hmm. not know mm -hmm. that story. Well, Belle, tell us, um, that's what I wanted to get into. I wanted to get into you both recollecting, you know, highlights or funny situations or shows that you remember especially and uh, and share those today. So, Belle, um, what what do you remember about some of the shows? Well, I on one of the shows, I know, like at the very beginning, um, I think. And we're still like a little unsure on some of like what started. But anyway, when we did the show, I remember going and finding information about how to do a TV show. And I had all of these different files about, you know, how you write the script up, how you do this, how you get this done. And, you know, that's because, you know, since Joe mentioned it, I was like, OK, let's figure out how to do this. So I was doing all that kind of research as well. And then um I think we ended up with a little a calendar. I said, okay, we need a calendar of what we think we might want to have on it. So it would give us some spots to talk about. Mm -hmm. And so we started that. And then uh, we started doing some of the shows. And I guess one of the ones I always really remember, though, is the B show. The beekeeper, when Kara went out and visited a beekeeper and um, actually learned about the bees and oh, and the olive oil. We did one about olive oh, oil yeah. and the olive oil tasting. I forgot about that one. Mm -hmm. That that was that was super good. And then we did some that were just like um, the finance shows and telling people about those different types of things. Uh, oh, we did a chiropractor one. So I learned more about the chiropractors and <laughs> so, so all of those different types of things as well. So. So, so kind of kind of interesting there, but I I just remember like all those those journals of like scripts as to how I get this started and then how it actually came into fruition. So you know, so good with that. But and I think too, like we we I think I don't know, Karen. How did you remember how you got started going out into the community? Because first we used to be just in the studio and bringing people in. Mm -hmm. And then we decided to start taking it out more to the community or, or Joe said, yes, we could. And well, I think that's something Joe wanted to do. I think he's the one that suggested it Just to go, um, because okay. I certainly didn't know what I was doing. Joe and Paul and Dave taught me right. what I should right. be doing. Right. And, oh yeah, um, that's true. Yeah. But I, I do remember that bee, that beekeeper was Ray Wood. And uh -huh. um, it was, I was all suited up in all the protective gear and I'd never been to so close to so many bees in my entire life. It was kind of scary, but it was fascinating. And you know, of course, beekeepers are very important now because bees are endangered and, and we're losing more of them every year. So he's got a very important role in the community. Um, we did. We went out and and some of the shows I remember are the ones that, that you mentioned, Belle, but one of the ones um, was Burton's Bamboo Gardens. Um, and, Zach, and this is it's out in Morrow. And um, Zach Burton took us on a tour and he has 
I don't even know how many kinds of bamboo out there that he grows. And it's a nursery, so you can you can take the tour with him. I think he's still doing that. And um, you can buy bamboo, and he'll educate you on it. And it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. He not only has bamboo, but he has um, uh, statuaries that are ancient that he got from, um, you know, Asia. And, it, and he does weddings out there, too. So, um, wow. you know, if you want something to do um, to cool you off in the summer or just something pretty to look at, give them a call. They're on the Internet. So give them a call. And, and that might be something you'd like to see. It was fascinating, really fascinating. Another one I remember is we visited um, Rita oh, Nader Heikenfeld. And um, she is an herb lady. Yeah, she she does a lot of different things. I think she's been on TV, and mm -hmm. she, but she's she took us through her herb garden, and um, she talked about medicinal herbs on one of the shows, and on another one, we were actually inside her house, and she was fixing us um, meals with her herbs and the things that she grew at her house. And if you ever want some good recipes, she has a website called, let's see, it's abouteating.com. And, and I just was looking at that recently and downloaded a um, rib recipe that looked really good. She makes her own dry rub and she makes her own sauce and she gives you the recipes for all that. So that was really good. Let's see what else. Well, the beekeeper, you know, one time we had Mark Twain on the show. I don't know if, if you if either of you have seen that one, but um, his, I think the gentleman's name was Stephen Holland. Holland, and I don't. He's he's an impersonator, but he had the hair, he had the talk, he had he was dressed up like Mark Twain, and he taught us a lot about history and the real Mark Twain and what was really going on. So, uh, but in addition to that, you know, we had shows on, we had uh, Sheriff Larry Sims on, we had the fire chief on talking about safety and um, we had LCMB on talking about finances and we had falls prevention. And then we would take you out to the 741 center and show you the exercise programs we had. I remember doing mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, just there were just so many things, and then of course we would touch on topics, you know, like Alzheimer's disease and Medicare and insurance and all the questions we have as we're getting older and, and we don't understand the systems. I know that there there have been updates uh, mm -hmm. in, in many of those areas, and so we always try to um, update our audience whenever possible. So, um, you know, we, we try to vary uh, the informational kinds of um, topics with, mm -hmm. you know, some of the more the fun, fun, the fun, the fun. Mm -hmm. and I remember um, Joe is so good about adapting <laughs> You yes. Know, yes. Camera, and you know, sometimes yes. it's two cameras, and you know, he brings it all in. And um, one time, I said, "Well, I'm, you know, I've been an usher at the tennis tournament for years, and I have to say that many of the ushers at the tennis tournament right here at the Mason, the, mm -hmm. the Lindner Tennis Center, um, mm -hmm. are older than I am." And, um, and I said, I think that we need to highlight, you know, how, how active these folks are in volunteer right. capacities. Ah, and mm -hmm. and many of them play, still play tennis, as I did today with my, one of my sons before swimming with my grandkids. And then, um, so we went to the tennis tournament and we, you know, Joe said, well, let's set it up here outside the volunteer tent. And so I, I grabbed a, two or three of the people I had been working with. And I said, I'd like, you know, to feature you um, on feeling good. Well, of course, many times people are like, oh, I can't do TV. You know, I, I wouldn't be able to do that. And I said, listen, I will just be talking to you like we're talking now. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And, and I have to kind of chuckle because when you talked about all the scripts, I said, we really won't be following the script. I usually just do like, who are you? Who, what, when, where, why? You know, I usually mm-hmm. just hit those. So yeah. just, I'll ask you and then I'll listen and you just answer and we'll go from there. Right. So uh, it was so much fun because then, you know, Joe puts it all together and makes it look so pr- smooth and professional. And mm-hmm. when I send them the link, uh, typically everyone I've ever interviewed, they're like, oh my gosh, I had no idea that I could actually do this. So I, I felt, I felt, I felt good because I felt like it made them feel more positive. Feel good, right, right. Being on TV and actually just you being know what? themselves. I have to tell you, I, I've looked at some of the shows um, that I did and some that you've also hosted too, Shelly. And it never ceases to amaze me, the knowledge base of the guests that are, the, are I mean, they, they know their topics so well and they have so much information to share. So I hope people are really listening and, and um, gaining some of that because it's just, if, if you didn't interview these people, people wouldn't know about some of these things. Right. Yeah. And um, uh, I, I tell them also, I said, so you can see the link on the WCCS website, mm-hmm. but it's also on YouTube. And mm-hmm. Joe sends copies of the show to ICRC channels and mm-hmm. Miami Valley cable channels. And so every once in a while, I'll have people say, oh, my gosh, I saw the show on Sunday. And so I said, well, I'm going to start checking the calendar of events and see when Feeling Good show. So believe it or not, the Feeling Good program is um, broadcast on Sunday at nine o'clock on channel Mm -hmm. 17. If you get channel 17 and it's opposite CBS Sunday morning. So it's like (laughs) Jane Pauley. Or watching me oh, on, or, like, or like Shelly Abrams. <laughs> so, yeah. So it's like, okay, I'm watching. Uh, I'll watch it a little bit in this room. I'm going to watch Jane Polly. I will record this. But it was just oh, so funny, funny because Jane Polly has always been like one. I've admired her so much. And when it came mm-hmm. up, they were opposite. I was like, okay, this is like so coincidental, you know, type thing. But it, it is often viewed. I mean, it shows several times during the week. Um, right. And people will say, well, I don't, if I don't get the Lebanon channel, still, can I still see it? Mm-hmm. And I said, yes, you can. I said, go on YouTube, go to the WCCS website, and you can see it and it's archived. So if you missed it, you can go through the shows. If, as you've mentioned, you know, you go through different shows and you can see mm-hmm. way, you know, way back. So a hundred episodes. Did you ever imagine that feeling good would still be rolling along a hundred episodes later? No, I wasn't sure after the first couple of shows it would still be going. <laughs> Oh, well, wow. I knew I knew we were in. I knew we were good for three to five years because that was part of the strategic plan. So, oh, okay, so you were going to force me to do that, huh, Mel? <laughs> well, that's interesting that it was. <laughs> no, part, I'm, I'm just. <laughs> but it was part of the strategic planning that you did. Right. Well, yeah, on the marketing side of it, one of our big things was more visibility in the community, mm-hmm. and I felt as a um, development marketing director that that would be a good way to get our name out there and i think it is for right. sure there, right. there's something about being on tv even cable mm-hmm. tv right that people but, people see you in their in their home right and and i think that that i think that makes an impact don't you mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah definitely mm-hmm. I would think on that because, you know, like, what is that little the, the phrase? Like how you pivot is how you prosper. 
So, you know, we pivoted in that time frame, you know, because that was what, eight years ago now. So a lot of the things that are more popular now, they were really just coming on the horizon then for technology right. and changes and mm -hmm. doing things and the cable TV being even more acceptable and in people's homes. Because I, I think I remember something about it only being first in Lebanon, but Joe, like you said, would be sending it out mm -hmm. to all these places, but we're really not knowing. Well, now I get it actually on my um, um, television at home and I'm not in Lebanon area. So, oh. I mean, it is, it is going around and people are seeing the program. So, so yeah, that's, that's what, that's what that's, I said. It was good. I knew it was good for three to five years. So, <laughs> Well, I think too. But I'm just so glad you guys kept it up, though. Definitely Karen, because at least she was there a little bit longer than when I was there and after I left. So, so it was all good. Topics that mm -hmm. are are uh, you know kind of a, a wide range of topics mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. that are not just for one county or one, you know, uh, we mm -hmm. were talking earlier about the ILR program, the Institute of Learning and Retirement. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> We've done several shows just as well. with people that I've met who've been speakers. Uh, we've actually, Joe's gone with the cameras and we've actually gone to a classroom and we have broadcast from an actual presentation or two at the VOA Learning Center, Miami's VOA Learning Center. And so, um, you know, we've, we've really tried to, to bring all types uh, of speakers in. Um, and, and it's really, you know, and, and our audience gets bigger and bigger because the, the 50 and over audience, right. which is our featured mm -hmm. audience, right. is growing bigger and bigger, right? Right. Mm -hmm. right. It is. Yeah, and I think, too, it's always just always evolving. You know, just like you're saying, as we're all getting older, then there are more opportunities to do things or our interests actually all we, are changing. And some things that we weren't as involved in earlier, well, now it's more, um, you know, more relevant for us. And then there are also changes within that relevancy. And even within our family. So now it's like, okay, oh, wow, I need to tune into this. I need to listen to this. Oh, this, this is something that maybe I can get involved in that I didn't have time earlier in my life to do, right. but now I want to do that. So, mm -hmm. so I think those are all, all great shows that you guys are still producing and pulling that all together for us. So I'm excited still about it. Like I said, I just, actually, I just heard a show probably just, well, it had to have been last week on the Feeling Good uh, show, and I just saw it come on again. So it's like, oh, let me see what Feeling wow. Good is doing. <laughs> good, good, good. Well, yeah. Karen, Karen, let me ask you, um, mm -hmm. what are you, what are you up to now? What are you doing, and uh, what are some of your interests? Well, I'm retired. Um, which just I means, which just means you have more room now to do. A different variety of things. I do, you know, and for the first um, year or so, it was great because I, I was able to do some educational things. I was um, teaching and, and also taking classes and very, very busy. And then, um, you know, of course, last year, um, everything kind of stopped. And um, but I had time to exercise. I, ha I have to tell you all because nobody believes this, but I have a three inch notebook full of all my therapy exercises I'm supposed to be doing over the years. And so I put it, I put all, I found them all. I put them all in a big notebook and I go through page by page because now I have time to exercise. Um, and so now and I'm, I'm this, I, well, I, I try to do it. Um, I, so now I'm trying to decide now that we can get back into things and things are opening up again, what I want to do. And, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not real sure. I have a school real close to me and I started out in education. I didn't finish in education, but that's where I started out. So I thought, well, maybe I'll try that again. So I'm just. Just looking at your options, right? I am looking at my options. Yeah. Very good. Well, Belle, um, I think our audience would be interested in what you're doing. I mean, right now that, that I ask you, 
um, about what's happening with you recently and share with us the new uh, member of your family. Yeah, well, hey, audience, you won't believe it, but I am a new grandmother. And so uh, our daughter had her first baby, my first grandchild, and her name's Sophia. And she is two and a half months old down here in Florida. And so I am here being grandmommy uh, duty for a few weeks and um, just enjoying all of that and all that it entails. It's so wonderful being a grandparent. Wow. Karen, do you have grandchildren? I do. I have four of them right yes. now. And that's the other good thing about retirement. You have time to spend with the grandkids. Um, there's one in the Cincinnati area and one down in Atlanta. So that's a little trek that we're able to take now more often. So, Well, you, you met my two grandchildren mm -hmm. and they've been... They've actually been on the show briefly a couple of times, mm -hmm. um, but it was funny today because their uncle was in from Florida. And so um, that's why I'm on Zoom. And so when, when he and I finished, Kyle and I played tennis, and then we went to the pool and the kids were already in the pool. So I go over to the pool and they're, they're age seven and six. And and I said, now I've, I've got to make sure I leave by a certain time because I have to get back to the condo and get ready for the show. Mm -hmm. And you're welcome to, you know, come and join me and so forth. And Owen goes to all the kids are, okay, that means we can't splash grandma. We can't get her hair wet. <laughs> <laughs> so he already knew that the, his rules were, okay, we aren't going to splash. So that she she's got I heard him say she's got to do her interview today. So, oh. <laughs> so they're, uh, they're learning. Uh, they're learning. Yeah. But you know what? I think it's, it's so exciting, though, that we can be in this environment right now and still all be be seniors um, or, you know, seniors, whatever term that you really want to use, um, but still be doing so many different things but all still around the same age range or whatever, but it does, there's nothing that's prescripted that is already set in stone. We must do one, two, three. We can choose our own life, our mm -hmm. own style, which is really should have probably was all way back then as well, but people just didn't talk about it much, but I think it's great that we can share this today. And uh, my children were actually shocked that I was doing this today. I said, you know, I helped do a producer show, a TV show, feeling good at WCCS. They're like, what? When was I said, you guys did. <laughs> you guys did. Well, and there are so many more activities, like you're saying. Right. There are so many right. more things that are geared toward like intergenerational kinds of things. Right. That's why that's why I like to to have my grandkids see what I'm mm -hmm. doing because mm -hmm. I want them to feel comfortable about public speaking mm -hmm. and right. about joint, you know, thinking about, well, if grandma can do this, I guess I can do this, you know, type thing. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that it's teaching them um, you know, as well when they when they see me do this these programs and you just pivoted to that new role yes. so how you pivot is how you prosper yeah, there you go. well um do you have any future activities or or things that you would like to promote while we're while we're talking about what we're doing or contact information bell maybe if people want to um contact you as far as your um you know, your business and but, so on. Well, sure. Yeah. So even though I'm doing grandmommy role, I'm actually also involved uh, with helping nonprofits to be fit. And that's focused, inviting and tactical. And we do that through Bell Huck Solutions. Um, you can found, find us at bellhucksolutions.com online. And um, or you can call me um, directly to the phone numbers right there as well. I don't know, Joe, if you want it, but you can take it off if you don't. 557-1714 and it's area code 937. So we'll be glad to help you 
and your nonprofits make some money. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, um, giving um, USA and sell Shelly, and this might not be appropriate right now. But anyway, they put out a new report just yesterday and fundraising actually was up. More people have given money to nonprofit organizations like WCCS. And um, those are always welcome because then we can do a lot more things like this type program, feeling good and other things. So all good. I just read that article yesterday. Oh, you in did? The paper, mm -hmm. so I, I, I recall that. Yes. Right. Um, Karen, how about you? Well, I'm, um, we recently moved, you know, I know we had a couple shows on downsizing and how you make that decision. And so we've been in this ranch house um, for about three and a half months now. So that's, that's really been keeping me busy um, unpacking and still trying to find things. Um, but, you know, there, it just, the time was right, you know, the, the stairs, the big old houses that you have to clean, it just, and, and I wanted to, and I kept telling my husband, I want to do this while we have some control over it and we're, when we can make our own decisions. So um, we're pretty happy with it. We're pretty happy with it, but that's, it's a lot of work. <laughs> it is a lot of work. And, and I downsized um, in 2014, in fact, the night in 2014 that the gala was happening, I was also turning my keys over to my house I had lived in for 40 years. And that was when the new owners wanted the keys was that night. So a lot was happening yeah. <laughs> on that, on that particular. Oh, wow. But, um, what? Downsizing, downsizing was a whole, was a whole kind of, um, topic that I wanted to cover mm -hmm. and and tell people start early, early yes because yes. it's it's not only things that you're sorting through but you're sorting through memories as Memory, well yes mm -hmm. that's a different that's a whole different ball game when you're talking about separating from your memories how to keep hold of the memories and be able to do it in, a, in an efficient way. So, right. um, you know, I'm, I'm still working on that, but, you know, it takes a while. It, it takes yeah. a few Shelly. years. Yeah, yeah Shelly, that it could be actually a great show because I am trying to figure out how to um, have all those photos that I've taken over the years of mm -hmm. our four children and then put them in something that's compact. So maybe a show on that. Could help us well, all. I will oh, tell you places that do that. Yeah, I will tell you. Yeah. To, well, I have checked on the places that turn everything into digital. You know, all your mm -hmm. VHS tapes. I have, all too, your, I have all too much for them. Yeah, but but I will tell you, our <laughs> cam, our our volunteer cameraman Paul, right there at the studio. I interviewed him two episodes ago, not this, not the current one, but the one prior. And he mm -hmm. talks all about Flickr. Flickr right. is the website to go to. And he recommends, and, and he even talks about call him and he will walk you through the steps. He loves sharing that information uh, because wow. he's done it with slides, with photos, with you know he's he's done been there done that and he is my go-to person for capturing the memories in a in a uniform and organized way yes on, online so that, wow okay that show is is there okay so, i'll have to check that out mm -hmm. <laughs> I, we've had dave on our other cameraman we featured dave because he's knows everything about nature, right. and Warren County, you know, reforestation and just a number of things. We need to pull him back in. Paul was a little leery of, of being interviewed, but once he, he, I started, you know, I just asked him a couple questions. We just kept talking and I just kept, he just kept talking. I was listening and kind of taking notes. He was he was fine with it. Now I'm trying to get 
Joe Hackman to be <gasps> interviewed. And I said, just set up the camera and I'll, I'll get behind the tripod and you get on. I haven't, I haven't quite convinced uh, you of that yet. So we, we'll, we'll have to work on it, won't we? Right. Yeah. yeah. That'll, be, that'll be great. Well, thank you so much for taking the time today. And um, in closing, if, you, if you're thinking of any other recollections that you would like to share, um, you know, let's, we'll, we'll just wrap up our, our reminiscing uh, about feeling good. And uh, we'll be looking into the future for 100 more episodes. Wow. Sounds oh, great. Sounds great. So if you have any ideas... Uh, of topics that you would like to see, uh, I would I would uh, be happy to receive those because different times people will actually say, you know, I'd like to know more about that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you're talking about just having moved, and ARP, which is a good a good resource. I go to I get their newsletter, their magazine, mm-hmm. and they just had a major uh, article about housing affordability for especially for the age 50 and older Mm -hmm. and affordability is a key issue um, across the country for all ages Mm -hmm. and I just read that today uh, that that was a uh, more houses need to be built but affordable housing Mm -hmm. needs to be available because people would like to age at home, if at all possible. Mm-hmm. So That's I think, true. I yeah. Think, I think that will be one of our future programs soon because uh, ARP has a livable communities project going now. And Oxford is one of the livable communities that are. Wow. Uh, okay. So um, I think I'm going to be focused on that very soon. Mm-hmm. And especially with the house, with the housing shortage too, right? Yeah, yeah. So that would all be great. Well, I'm feeling good because you two are here joining me today. Thank you so much, and we hope that our audience is feeling good as well. We'll see you soon. Bye for now. <laughs>